Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me, Stitching with Sue here. If you're brand new to my channel, well, you've come to the right place. I'd like to welcome you. And you know what I just remembered? I did not put my microphone on. Hold on. You know, it's always the simple things in life that we forget. So I do want to welcome you here. Thanks so much for joining us. If you are a returning subscriber, hold on a sec, let me plug you in. That the microphone is working and the dog is barking, so everything is good, right? So if you've been here before, thanks so much for coming back. In order for you to not miss out on any of my videos, I welcome you to hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. Next to that, you'll see bells. Those are notification bells. If you click the full bell, well, it's all colored in, that will be the bell that tells you every single time I upload a new video. So I know you'll not want to miss out on anything, including any giveaways or anything that I do. Speaking of giveaways, I have a free, that's right, free design for you. I happen to be, um, going around on the Creative Kiwi site. And if you're not yet a member of their Facebook group, be sure to join. Just do a search, Creative Kiwi. I think there's a few questions you have to answer. And also check out the Stitchin' with Sue Facebook page. As I was in Creative Kiwi, I came across a brand new coaster design. Let me move you back a little bit so you can see it. And it's absolutely free. Look how cute it is. So I just stitched it out and I thought, you know, I think my friends would like to uh, stitch along with me. Now, FYI, it doesn't look like much, but it has 12,940 stitches. Look at that smiley face. And it is 26 minutes because the last step is like 18 minutes stitch. So we better get going on this. So what I have, um, it comes in multiple sizes. Uh, I did. I should, probably should have downloaded uh, 4x4. I didn't. I'm doing, am I doing the 4x5? No, I think I'm doing the, let me double check. Let me measure here on my little tape ruler thingy. That's a 24. One, two, three, four. No, I'm doing the 5x5 five five one. So there is a four by four, five by five, six by six, and I don't remember if there's another one. But how fun would this be? Sitting on your desk, or it's pretty flat, pretty easy to stick in a card for someone that just needs a little sunshine in their day. Okay, so let's get rolling. I uh, have a double water soluble stabilizer. Um, Creative Kiwi recommended. There is full instructions in case you're wondering that too. In the, her instructions, she recommended a double wash away stabilizer, five by seven hoop, 7511 needle, using the Brother and Novus Essence VE2300 machine. And a lot of people always ask, what machine, what needle, what thread, what... All you gotta do is listen to the video. You'll find all your answers answered. And if they're not, then leave a comment and ask. All right, I have a feeling this might hit the arm of the machine a little bit. So uh, let's get going. Okay, so first, all right, needle is thread, okay. First stitch is an outline stitch. And it's gonna show you where the batting is. Now, I have to be honest, it's a pain in the butt to cut out, I'm just saying probably takes one of the most things to do for the entire thing is cutting out but it's well worth it and probably if you have little embroidery scissors like I know I have somewhere it might help a little bit better to get into all those little nooks and crannies okay so there's our placement stitch I'm gonna go ahead and put in a piece of batting Slip that in there. All right, let's stitch that down. And I found this yellow and white uh, check 
in my stash and I apologize for my dog it just seems as though every single time you know she hasn't barked at all except before when the mailman came but every single time I go to do a video I don't know what the heck her problem is she has to start barking so if she barks again I'm gonna do one apology and I'm gonna do another apology for me hitting the camera because chances are now there is only one let me see one two there is only three or four changes of thread and there's only depending on what color you want your sunshine to be I mean it doesn't have to be yellow you know think outside the box and make your sunshine whatever color you'd want it to be all right so now I'm gonna take this off the machine and I got a trim around all of those um, I don't know I almost want to call them petals but they're not rays of sunshine so close your eyes I'm going to move you over to the desk you see yep there we are here's our sunshine so cute and here's a mug this is a pretty big mug and look at it fits perfect perfect on there okay you know what I'm gonna grab though over here on my desk I have a pair of these these are paper snips by Stampin Up and I'm a Stamp Stampin Up demonstrator as well and these with this big thing on here these are oh I see a bee is trying to come in well, I hope not uh, these are scissors I use strictly for fabric or twine or ribbon these might help out okay so what we have to do is cut around every one of those petals so anyhow um, I'm not sure if I'm being the camera or not but FYI like I said it is a little bit of work and then once you put your fabric down you're gonna have to trim again let me see how these work if I just use these. These are super sharp as I just poke my finger with them. But they do have very um, narrow tip. And you want to make sure that you don't cut your batting. I don't think these are going to be any easier. I really don't think that this is an easy process. It just takes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to poke in my batting with them. It just takes a little bit of time to trim this out. I'm not going to lie to you. So while I'm trimming, I probably could have done this ahead of time, but I want you to see the whole process. I'm shredding my batting there. I want you to see the whole process of making this and I know a lot of people would be like well just fast forward or whatever I mean if you want to fast forward by all means go ahead but don't pass too far ahead because you may miss out on something I did have a giveaway last week and um, I sent out the prize on Tuesday so she should be getting it. Um, I gave away uh, one of the mug rugs that I stitched. Li not live, but on camera. On my channel. Alright. Like I said, I would imagine if I did the 4x4, four four, it would even be harder to cut out probably should have went with the larger one then it might have been easier to cut out but nonetheless I don't know of an easier way to do this I suppose if I had a scanning cut maybe I could have pre-cut this but I do have one but it's an older one and it just isn't reliable for things All right, let me get situated here on my chair I'm telling you I'm working up a sweat doing this because I know you're all watching and nobody wants to sit around waiting
but I will put down below where it says show more or more whatever it says I never remember what it says where you can get the design and you can download it and make your own rays of sunshine for yourself if you have somebody that likes to do fussy cutting this might be where you'd want to invite them over for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and let them fussy cut while you're enjoying their company all right we're almost there folks one thing I'm trying to be careful of is not to poke a hole through my stabilizer all right let's do a little once around let me bring it up close so I can see I didn't get as close as I would have liked to but we'll see what happens see in these little tiny things if anyone has any suggestion for this and I probably should use my my flat hoop that would help as well okay all right I'm gonna go put it back on the machine let me bring you all back over hopefully you're all still there let me get situated here okay so the other thing I did is the fabric is that I have is kind of flimsy so I doubled up my fabric let me put it this way doubled up the fabric and my ceiling fan is on so you don't want my fabric to blow away so my fabric is doubled up all right so now we're going to stitch down our fabric <coughs> and I have two pieces to put on the back as well doubled up don't put your fingers in the hoop <laughs> as I do not a good idea and you may want to iron your fabric it's a personal choice you'd like to do that so anyhow today is Saturday it is uh, June 3rd 2023 and it's one o'clock in the afternoon so depending on when it is you're watching this you could be watching this uh, you know who knows when okay so now we're gonna do inside stitching I'm gonna keep the yellow thread kind of does an overall design on the inside and the petals that also helps with the stability of it as well because at first I thought oh I wonder if I should do this on vinyl and after I stitched it out the way that I did it it's very sturdy it's not flimsy and don't forget to use wash away stabilizer because we're going to do satin stitches and um, the satin stitches you're going to go around to uh, remove the extra stabilizer by just wetting it and it's a little bit of a warm day today although uh, here in northeastern Pennsylvania we have been having a little bit of a heat wave my goodness I think it was uh, 90 close to 94 93 94 degrees yesterday today it's supposed to be in the 70s but I don't know it just feels warm the Sun is out but they are calling for possibly um, a little bit of rain or a thunderstorm I think we need a good thunderstorm we had a little bit of a thunderstorm yesterday later in the day but um, not enough rain to do anything to cool off although it did get cooler last night and uh, it wasn't too bad for sleeping now I did have to break down yesterday and put the air on 
my downstairs because it was hot and I do have ceiling fans so I have the ceiling fans going but yeah it just ended up being way too hot all right okay so next up I'm gonna change my thread but keep that yellow thread nearby because we're gonna need that again and there she goes again we're gonna use um, a very light color blue because now we're gonna work on the eyes so let me re-thread with this light blue now that's not saying you know you have to use light blue this is what I'm using you do whatever color you would like to do my neighbor's been working on their car some kind of issue with starting it or something or another and they have a driveway but for some reason they parked the car on the street and they've been going out there and out there and out there trying different things and now they have somebody else over there looking at the car so it's probably what Aurora is so upset about somebody's walking across the street <laughs> even though the other night when they were out there I did go out I didn't know they were out there because the lilacs were in the way and then it was like all of a sudden oh there's the neighbors and she barked at them then too <laughs> but he was worried saying he said you know is she vicious and I said no not at all I said she just barks he goes yeah I hear her barking so I don't know is that a nice way of the neighbors saying dog barks too much <laughs> we all know she does you know I mean in a way it's good especially in the middle of the night if she's barking at something but to bark at every little thing that goes on by is can get a little annoying and I would imagine for the neighbors too and see the windows are open down there so she hears everything now yesterday when I closed all the windows and put that the AC on she still barked a little but she wasn't able to hear as much so because she's older she's going to be 11 uh, we celebrate hers Dory's and my birthday all in July because the two of them were adopted in July and my birthday's in July, so we celebrate July as all of our birthdays. So Aurora's gonna be 11, and Dory's gonna be, let's see, I got her, I got her, when did I get her? Is she gonna be seven? She's gonna be seven, I'd have to, I can't cut this thread, I can't see it. <laughs> um, I think I got her 2016. So, do the math. <laughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 23. Yeah, I think 7. She's going to be 7. Okay, so I'm going to put black in now because now we're going to do the eyes and a little smiley. So you can see it, it stitches up fairly quick. The, the only problem is doing that cutting out. Okay, so we're going to do the eyes and the little smiley face then we'll be putting the back on already and more cutting let's see you want to go in a little closer how's that hopefully it's clear and not blurry But I just kept white bobbin in the bottom. Now, when you're doing around the outside, if you want to go ahead and put yellow bobbin, a yellow in your bobbin, yellow thread on top, or just have matching bobbin and top, you can do that. But I didn't mind the little bit of white that shows because that's fine by me. It doesn't show on the top, it shows on the bottom. Okay, so we're doing the little eyes. So these are all quick. The uh, last stitch, which is a real nice finishing stitch, that takes 18 minutes. That's right, 1, 8, 18 minutes. But it does such a great, Korean Kiwi does such a great uh, job on their designs. I never have to worry when I purchase a design from them because I know that it's going to stitch out fine. 
and free. Yeah, so make sure you check them out all the time. They have a section that says free designs. And they slip them in. Or you know what? They have a mailing uh, email that you could sign up for. And when they have free things or they're having sales or anything, you know firsthand that... Um, I think that's where I found out about the free design. I think it was in the email. Um, I don't think... It could have been Facebook because I belong to their Facebook page too. But I think it was email. Okay. Let me trim that. I'm going to load back up with the yellow. And we're going to be putting our backing on. Let me get my yellow thread. So just a few thread changes on this one. So that's not too bad. So this is a 5x7 hoop. So if your machine does 5x7 uses a 5x7 hoop. I'm trying to get the thread on there. Um, you could do the 5x5. Five five. Okay, I'm going to take this out of the machine and off to the side. I'm going to attach my double layer backing with some uh, white um, medical tape. So that's what I have. It's not going to interfere with the stitching in any way because I'm putting it off to the top and bottom. It's just going to hold the two pieces together. Let me show you. Can you see I have it at the top? Oh, I guess you can't see that. And at the bottom here. Okay, so now I got to flip this over. Let me take a peek to make sure. Yeah, should have used a little bit more. Hold on a sec. Let me move you aside for a minute. So I got to get this out. See that I had flipped over. I'm going to get some more tape on here. Better off using more tape than not because the worst thing you want to happen is your fabric to flip over. peak okay everything looks good and you move you back over okay so now it's going to do the outline and then we're going to be back to uh, doing some more cutting This time we're going to be cutting around the top piece and the bottom piece. So I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. I really don't have any plans. So that's why I thought, you know, I saw this last night when I was in bed. A lot of times I, well, majority of the times I take my iPad to bed and I usually watch something before I fall asleep. Sometimes I fall asleep and don't even get to see the show that I was going to be watching. But I saw this and I almost wanted to jump out of bed when I woke up in the middle of the night about midnight to, uh, whoop, to go ahead and, and stitch it out. All right, let me make some room over here. Let me bring you all back over to the desk. So you can watch me painfully cut out. Oh, see, it flipped over. It flipped over. Mm -mm -mm. So, oh, fix your scissors, Sue. I'm just going to trim around that. And we should be fine. So I needed some more tape. I thought I had enough tape. But I'll just cut around that. And nobody will know, right? What happens here stays here. Kind of like the Vegas thing, right? Let me trim that out. Okay. So now I have to painfully trim around and take this tape off if I can.
trim around the back and trim around the front. And then all we have left to do is our 18 minutes of stitching. I'm not even sure if you could see. And then my big hand is in the way. It's kind of like the saying, not much to see here, folks. Keep moving. <laughs> Got a little bit of double fabric there to cut through, but thankfully this fabric is not thick. So if you have a pair of scissors that has a long uh, needle edge ending, needle edge, what is the word I'm looking for? You can get right in these little cracks, no problem. I'm just going to kind of see if I can get a little closer there. And turn your hoop when you're cutting. Don't feel that yet, you know, you can't turn your hoop. You can turn your hoop. Whatever helps. Don't worry about all the other rules. Because the embroidery police are not going to come. And say, you are turning your hoop. I mean, after all. I'm going to do a nice job. Okay, we're almost done with the back. I don't believe Creative Kiwi has done a video on this yet. But it's pretty straightforward like any other. Uh, coaster that you know you stitch in the hoop they're pretty much all the same just sometimes the backing how you finish them might be a little different sometimes they have that envelope backing you know like a pillow would be oh, I didn't do too good there you know where you fold the two pieces and they meet in the center oh I gotta cut the other layer Sometimes they have that backing. And if they have that backing, you don't have to use the wash away. Just use your regular cutaway. Oh, I'm having difficulty cutting that. I'm going to go back to that. Because I'm starting to shred the fabric already. My hands are getting tired from cutting. All right, let me see now closer to my face so I can see. Trying to get underneath that. <sighs> All right, I'm going to call that good. Okay, now we turn it over to the front. Oh, my fingers got stuck in the scissors. And let's go ahead and trim our front where we want to be a little bit more careful with our trimming. you're going to see the front. And I always say to do the back first. Number one, you have a little bit more experience. So if you kind of goof up a little, it's the back. And number two, sometimes you're so anxious to get the design going, you might forget that you had to trim the back. So if you do the back first, get that one out of the way, then do the front. That might be a better choice for you. All right, we're about halfway done with the front here. I think I'm calling for some rain later on. I have two layers of fabric here too, so I'm also trying to be careful and make sure I cut through both. So 
So if we get some rain, that might cool things off a little bit. I'll be able to go and sit out on the porch. Enjoy a nice rain. We haven't had much rain here lately. So we could probably use some. Normally we have lots of rain. Too much rain causes flooding. Got to get in there a little bit better. But this year so far, it's been dry. It's been crazy with the weather. You know, you go from 90 to 70 to, you know, frost. Just going to bring this up close to my face so I can get a good look. See where it is I might have missed. I'm just blowing the little pieces away. All right. I think that's pretty, pretty good. All right. Let me throw that away. Okay. Let's go back over to our hoop. I mean our hoop over to our machine. Let me get it back in here. Okay. Let you folks be right there. I do see a little bit here, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay foot down and here we go so 18 minutes if I was able to figure out a way how you do the uh, fast forward I would love to do that I don't really do I don't well, I don't really I don't at all do editing <coughs> excuse me but um, you know I'm sure we could find something to chat about I mean, turn you a little bit um, so Monday I have my uh, appointment with my neuro ophthalmologist that's long in coming the last one I had to cancel because I was sick and then I had to wait like two more months to get another appointment so I am NOT missing this appointment at all she's gonna do um, some more testing let me grab a little drink here going to do more testing on um, my visual to see whether or not I'll be able to drive because I have an issue with the depth perception. So we'll see. See what her expert opinion is. I'm kind of waiting for that to decide whether or not um, I'm going to keep my car because if I can't drive it, why keep it? you know I'll just sell it and save myself a lot of money because I have you know car payment every month and then you have your insurance and your wear and tear on the car and maintenance and all that kind of stuff so people that don't own a car save themselves a lot of money okay so now we're gonna go and do the satin stitch around the edges But this just makes me smile. I hope it makes you smile too. And like I said, it does take a little bit, but it's very easy to do. Perfect for a beginner stitcher or those that are experienced. You can also use this to make it as a patch and um, use fabric glue and fabric, fabric glue it to, you know, fabric or I guess that would be sensible, right? Glue it, fabric glue on fabric. Sometimes I wonder what what my brain is thinking. Now it does that little whoop de doo So it does it for every little section. Normally you get that at the end, but this time it's in the middle of the stitching out. So one petal at a time, or ray of sunshine at a time. So I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. I still have this cough, but um, other than that, I'm feeling good. Um, I think the other day I filled you in that my platelet count was still, was actually lower this week than it was last week. So I'm continuing on the back drum and they're holding my chemotherapy until my platelet count comes up. So I think midweek coming up, 
the uh, mobile lab will be here to uh, take more blood, do more blood work, and uh, we'll see. Which I'm kind of glad I'm not on the chemo because I have that eye appointment, and that's what happened last time. I was on the chemo and I got sick from it, and I didn't go to the appointment. So. And of course, there's the dog again. So you're with me long enough to hear she goes in bouts of, of barking. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments, what are you working on? Is this a uh, design you're gonna go grab from Creative Kiwi? I will put down below uh, the information on where you can get the design for yourself. It comes in all different formats, depending on what kind of machine you have and uh, different sizes, like I said. I'm doing the five by five, and I think it's perfect. I think the four by four might be a little small, but you know, who knows? I may stitch one of those out as well, just to see. But anyhow. Because I did, I think I downloaded a, a larger one too, but I would need to use the larger hoop. And that would take a lot more work, but I think it might be easier to cut out around those uh, rays of sunshine. <laughs> Once it gets done though, like you didn't even know that it was like gingham fabric. It just looks like yellow fabric. So if you have any kind of yellow fabric, you don't have to use gingham, you can use anything orange fabric would be fun or if you have any fabric that's like um, uh, marble with you know reds and oranges and yellows that would be really fun or you can go and do yourself a pink one right whatever makes you happy so we're gonna go ahead one two three we're on the fourth one There's 12 of them in total. And after it does all the little petals, then it goes around the circle part and it does a fine stitch out around that too. So it's really cute. Really cute. See, I didn't cut too good there in the in the crack of that one, but the stitching covered it over. So you don't have to be exact, but close enough, the stitching will cover that over. The satin stitches are nice and wide. They're not, you know, flimsy. So it'll be able to cover over a multitude of what you may feel is a mistake. So I've been looking at different other differences, different designs other designs to see what um, next project I know I get a lot of a lot of um, requests for mug rugs and I still want to do the rope ball I have to get my sewing machine out for that and uh, I've done rope balls before but I've never put them on the embroidery machine to stitch out a design in the center and it's really interesting how you do it you almost make it like a coaster and then that, after that is when you um, do the embroidery on it and when the embroidery is done then you take the rope bowl back to your sewing machine and you finish up the bowl it looks like rain alert a brief rain shower just came up in my weather app yeah, it does. It is clouding up out there. But it's nice and sunny in here. Let me lift this up a little bit. It looks a little blurry to me. I'm trying to look through. The center has the, the whole mechanism to hold it into the, uh, the holder. So. Maybe that cleared it up a little bit. All right, moving on to the next petal. 
So I hope that made it clear. It looked like it was a little fuzzy to me. But we're 40 minutes into it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let Bob do his work. And if you're wondering who's Bob, Bob is my brother embroidery machine. more petals to go or raise and then the circle in the center and then we will be done and then you're going to want to uh, have some warm water and a q-tip or if you have aqua painters you can put water in the tube of your aqua painter and you're going to cut this out close to the stitching but not right next to it where you're going to cut the stitching and just go around it with the water and it just, the water dissolves. And um, it leaves you a nice, clean, finished edge. Love that, love, love, love. Here we got two more, two more to go. Oh, there she goes again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to listen to the video to see how loud that actually is for you guys because she is downstairs. Let me fix that for you. She is downstairs, but and she does have a deep, sharp voice. You would think that she's like a vicious dog gonna attack someone, but her tail is wagging and she's just barking. Now, when I'm downstairs, she starts barking and looks over at me. And you know how kids are? You give them the look. I give her the look, and then she, like, stops. <laughs> it's funny. But she knows she shouldn't be barking. But see, she's down there, and I'm up here. So she's kind of like, yeah, Mom's not going to yell at me because she's upstairs. And I hear her talking. So I know that she's doing a video. I'm sure she's thinking all those things, right? So I could bark as much as I want. All right, we got, what, two more to go? It's like two more to go. So hang in there, folks. If you have to fast forward, I don't blame you. Unless, you know, you're one of those kind of people like me that enjoys watching the machine stitch out. There's just something comforting about watching it stitch out. And it's like amazing to me to think <clears throat> that people can come up with how to do this design that the machine knows how to read it. Kind of like how the internet works. Nobody really knows how that all works, but it does. <laughs> we were talking the other day saying we remember when there was no internet and you didn't have all the resources, the social media, everything that you have today. I don't know. Was it a better world back then? Maybe. Maybe sometimes we get too much information. But that's the way it is. Who knows what the future is going to hold as far as the internet and social media and, and everything else. It's a good way to keep in contact with old friends as far as Facebook. And YouTube, it's a great way to uh, connect with new friends from all over the world. Because there are people from all over. Even I get some comments that are in English. And I try to use the translation. Because, you know, I, I'm wondering, well, you know, did they have a question? Is there something I can help them with? 
So I do ask if you, you know, do know English to please leave your comments in English, but I get it if, you know, I mean, I only know English. I had a little bit of Spanish in high school, but that was quite a few years ago. <laughs> And I don't really remember anything that I'd be able to carry on conversation or be able to read something and understand. Okay, now we're going to do the center circle. And let me see, uh, about another thousand stitches. going to do the satin stitch and then the little what I call whoop de do the little roundabout that is known for uh, creative kiwis designs really makes a nice finishing edge so much nicer than just the satin stitch I mean I really love it love it love it and it's I don't know if that's their trademark but any designs I've stitched out from Creative Kiwi, they've all had that little decorative finishing touch on all of their designs, which just make it so special. Well, the sun's coming out, so if there's a rain shower, perhaps I'll be able to see a rainbow. Haven't seen too many of them this year without having any rain, but Anyhow, I hope you're having a good weekend. You have some plans to maybe do some stitching, maybe go out with friends and family, enjoy a little cookout. Because even though summer doesn't officially come till the end of this month, I think once Memorial Day comes, I mean, it's summer. You know, it's summertime. And it's, I took out some chicken, so I'm going to be cooking some chicken later on. I thought of doing it. Uh, on the grill with barbecue sauce. It's my favorite kind of chicken. But that would mean I'd have to be running in and out and in and out. We're just sitting out there and waiting for it. I don't know yet. I don't know what mood I'm in. I won't know until I go to do it, right? But I'm leaning toward barbecue chicken. almost about done here with our circle oh, we got about 700 more stitches to go Do our little decorative edging around a circle. There we go. for the tone. Finish sewing. Hit the OK. And take my thread out. And go home. OK. All right, I'm going to take this out of the machine. 
and moving on over to the desk. Here we are. So there's the front. Oop, my microphone cords. Here's the back. Now see if I didn't want to have that little bit of white showing there, I could have used um, a yellow bobbin, but I'm okay with that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for any loose threads that the machine did not cut off. So it looks like there was one there. And another one here. And flip it over. If we have any threads. I'm not seeing any. Okay, so let's pop her out of the hoop. Now what you want to do is you want to take a sharp pair of scissors and you want to go, like I said, around without cutting the stitching. I like not to go too, too close because with my um, issue with the depth perception, I'm always afraid I'm gonna cut the design. So I rather have a, you know, too much left, you know, not like an inch left, but just for my own wishes. Oh. A couple little spots I can trim. All right. So there's our design. Now let me get, um, I had a water brush here. Do I still have one here with water in it? had one. I don't think I, no, I didn't leave it out. Okay, so this is what I like to use, a little water brush. And let me poke, poke you down here. And all I do is I just squeeze the water brush. And you can put a paper towel down and the water hits it. It works a lot quicker if you're using uh, warm water, but it works with cold too. And I just go around the outside. I'm squeezing this so water's coming out. And I'll just clean my desk when I'm done. I have some uh, alcohol wipes to clean if there's any sticky residue left. Or hand sanitizer, because we all know we got a lot of that now. How many of you remember when it was people were like hoarding it like toilet paper? I was watching a YouTuber the other day from New York and he said he went to the store to get toilet paper and they didn't have any. I mean, what is up with that? I mean, I know here in Pennsylvania we don't have a problem with toilet paper. So anyhow, um, let me get my little rag and wipe this up. So anyhow, can you see the difference where I went with the water and how it just dissolves and you just go all the way around and um, that just, let me squeeze some water out, that just dissolves and just goes away. And when you're all done, you'll end up with this. So I think it's really cute. Here's the back again. And it's pretty, pretty st sturdy. You know, it's not flimsy, it's pretty sturdy. I think a little bit of that water, uh, water soluble stabilizer, it kind of helps, makes it a little stiff on the ends. Now I wouldn't recommend taking this. I know some people take it and they just put the whole thing in water. And sometimes it ends up all wrinkly and everything. I just use just that little water brush and go around the edges and that's what I do. But um, I think they're so cute. 
really worth the time invested. You know, have another little project on the side. Just I wouldn't leave your machine, that's for sure. Because as soon as you leave your machine, that's when things happen. But I want to thank you all so very much for spending a lot of this time, an hour, about an hour, with me stitching out these fun little uh, sunshine coasters. So look down below, the link will be there for Creative Kiwi. I am not affiliated with them, but I wanted to do this fun video to share with you. When I see a free design, why not? So enjoy the rest of your day, your weekend, your night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and until next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.